CCN News is pleased to report the safe return of our Beijing Bureau Chief David Kindle, who was arrested by Chinese police in Tiananmen Square during a live broadcast on this program and held for questioning. He was expelled from China and is now in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. David, good to have you out. What happened to you? Thanks, Jim. It's good to be out. We were held for 24 hours in a detention cell and questioned extensively by People's Liberation Army interrogators. They didn't abuse us physically, but we were given the strong impression we were in danger. After a day of this, they bundled us on a plane and flew us to Hong Kong, telling us we were expelled. We caught the first flight to Taiwan, but I can tell you, it doesn't feel that much safer here than it did in Beijing. The populace in Taiwan is extremely nervous about the Chinese forces massing on the mainland just across the Taiwan Strait from here. Let me tell you officially what we have suspected for some days now. Marxist hardliner Li Peng has seized supreme power after a coup. There had been a power struggle since the death of Deng Xiaoping between Li Peng, Zheng Zemin, Deng's handpicked successor, and senior vice premier Zhu Rongji. Uh, hold on a second, David. The graphics crew is trying to catch up with you. Okay. <laughs> Lee has now ordered their arrest, and both Zhang and Zhu are apparently being hunted by the security police. Their whereabouts are unknown. Jim, we do know that the man who helped Li Peng seize power outright is General Yu Q. Lee, the leader of a political faction that gained authority because it led the exploitation of rich oil reserves in Manchuria during the time of Mao. He and his clique of supporters, all hardliners who believe China must stand alone in the world, became known as the Petroleum Faction. Nobody in the West knows much about this, Yu, but his name invokes some respect and a lot of fear in Beijing. The feeling here is close to panic. Dr. Adrian Mann, is Taiwan doomed? Jim, I believe the moment the Chinese forces have secured the Spratly Islands, if they can do that, they will move on Taiwan. It's a delicate catch-22, Jim. China needs to protect its northern shipping lanes to resupply the forces around the Spratleys. So it needs to take Taiwan for strategic reasons as well as national pride. But it can't move until American forces are neutralized in the Spratleys. So my guess is they will stay on the Chinese mainland, rattling their sabers until the situation in the Spratleys is resolved. As we speak, Taiwan's president, Li Teng Hui, moves his country's military to defend their precious independence. Across now to Sally Jarvis on the USS independence. Sally, how is the military situation right now in the Spratleys? Jim, the previous mood of optimism, the sense that we were approaching the end game, has started to evaporate. We hear that there is a fleet of surface ships heading towards the Spratleys from mainland China. Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Tom Clancy SSN and it's mission if you did not watch the briefing. There's a huge Chinese convoy coming to say hello to our American fleet. <clears throat> so we are to proceed to Waypoint Charlie and release our Tomahawks for anti-ship mission. We have an ally in the area. I don't know if they're at this waypoint, but the USS Bremerton will also be launching her Tomahawks. Yep, there she is. Uh, if I had a Gertrude, I'd be talking to her captain right now, saying a little, a few words. Okay, what do we got in this first waypoint? We're probably just going to end up getting to Alpha and moving on right away, so I'm probably just going to juice it up to two-thirds here. And, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be pretty uneventful, waypoint Alpha. Hmm. So I know some of you... Or all of you who watch this game also watch Dangerous Waters. I recorded, I did a mission, I did a quick mission. I've heard China's mind these waters. Holy shit. Okay, can I do anything about that? Ah, I bet. Alright, so I, uh, I did a quick mission as a sea wolf. And, uh, I did it on hard difficulty. And it was pretty hard. Like, I spent an hour and a half running around trying to make solutions and sink people. And can you believe this? Like, the two subs I launched on both lost, launched active countermeasures, and my ad caps fell for both of them. Can you believe that? And then this frickin' Akula launches shikvals, uh, not squalls on me. Those, uh, underwater rocket torpedoes. He launched two squalls on me, and they frickin' took me out. Like, squalls. Like, 
I don't know if they changed it in Dangerous Waters, but they're unguided in subcommand, so yeah. So I decided to scrap that. I'll do it again. That was just a piece of turd. I needed to get readjusted to Dangerous Waters. It's been so long since I played that, but uh, moving on. Oh, well, you just said it was secure. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> but yeah, so I recently found out that the Seawolf has a pretty big advantage over every other submarine in the game. For those of you that played Dangerous Waters, you know that the Seawolf has those three square things on its hull. Those are wide aperture arrays. And within 15,000 yards or thereabouts, you can actually... They can triangulate the, uh, an uh, enemy contact's location. So... <laughs> You can figure out how far something is away without using active sonar or uh, target motion analysis. But I was also using the uh, UUV, which is a submarine launch probe, sonar probe. And uh, using that, you can also do like triangulation kind of stuff too. So I don't know why I haven't really done that before, but I'm going to start employing those tactics when I redo that mission. So moving on. New contact range, 1728 yards. Uh what <laughs> half a mile or like three quarters of a mile what were you talking about new contact range 17 28 yards I'm not picking up anything oh this is a big one man there's gonna be is the Bremerton with us this whole way is she here I'm actually gonna do a turn I don't remember where what bearing that contact was on shit yeah but this is a this is a big one I might try and go down beneath this third layer here and run around here for a little bit, pick up some speed. But yeah, what what was it? It said something about a contact being 1,700 yards away, which is uh, like eight-tenths of a nautical mile, which is insane. So I don't know. I'm going to do this quick circle and probably dip below the layer, that next layer, and run at high speed towards Bravo. Because I think we're just supposed to take out enemy subs at this point. I don't remember there being landmines or having a way to necessarily deal with them. So we'll have to figure out what's up with that. We don't have high frequency sonar. So I don't know. But we'll figure that out in due time. Okay. Just about heading west. I haven't picked up anything yet. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to increase to one-third, actually. <clears throat> I don't know what that sonar contact was. I don't think there's anything around me. I don't think the Bremerton and I are, like, going buddy-buddy through this whole mission. We're probably just going to re-rendezvous at the launch zone. They wouldn't have us be that close together. SSISX. All right, well, I guess we're going topside. Positive buoyancy meet up. Literally. That was kind of a pun, not really. But I do want to recur return to current to previous course. But I guess we'll do that in due time. Yeah, there's no one out there's no one around here, man. I don't know what the hell I was worried about. <clears throat> man, look at that. Eight sides. State of the art nineteen ninety six. <laughs> but yeah, submarine games actually lend themselves to being a lot more timeless looking than other things. They're pretty simple geometric shapes. At least these LAs are. I don't know about an Akula. That doesn't really model as well back then, but whatever. Because those, their counting towers are so streamlined and hydrodynamic looking. Alright, neutral me up. Oh god, I waited too long. I'm gonna surface. <laughs> I think. Maybe not. I might be good. Shit, I don't know. I've waited too long. I keep fucking waiting too long on that crap, man. Yeah, I'm gonna surface. Uh, head full. Just need to drive myself down. I can't breach, man. Alright, I think we're good at this point. Alright, what do we got? Comms. Sink pack fleet to Cheyenne. Intel reports heavy mining of waters in your area. Advise you run shallow and minimize effective damage. Minimize effective damage? So you're saying I can't control what damage happens to me? Alright, I guess I'll stay up here. 
Well, let's return to our pre previous course and then I guess I'm going to increase to two thirds here. This is a pretty big waypoint and I'm not picking up anything. Freaking mines, man. What the, can you believe that crap? What are we supposed to do against mines, man? I have no way to detect them. Would active sonar work? I don't want to go active. Hmm. I don't know, man. It's worth checking out or something. Ugh. Well, this may be more or less eventful. I might be doing some kind of cutting here. I don't know. More or less uneventful. This won't be eventful. Not really expecting any submarines. If it's heavily mined, I don't think they would put their own submarines in here, but I don't know. <clears throat> Keep it shallow. Minimize the effect of the mine's damage. Yeah, like I'm just supposed to take it? Are you kidding me? I'm just trying to get as shallow, shallow as possible then at that point. Stay away from these frickin' mines. Yeah, I should be going up much faster than that at 20 degree up bubble. I don't know what they're going on about with that shit. But yeah, no problem. Let's check out top side. Oh yeah, speed is above range for that. Reverse. Ho oh, ho. Never really used reverse before. I'm sure it makes all kinds of noise. <laughs> Mr. Ryan, we just unzipped our fly. Now if he makes any kind of move, I'm going to blow the fucker to Mars. <clears throat> Alright. Anything topside? Nope. I'll quit your con, you crows. Seagulls, when I saying crows. All right, well, I'm just gonna actually just run this out. Uh, I might as well just keep recording, but I might there might be swaths where I just don't say anything. I'll just end up cutting it out because I'm not picking up anything. I'm trying to stay away from these supposed mines. It's kind of boring. All right, I'm going to full. I don't got the patience for this crap. <laughs> Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been reading uh, Red Storm Rising, and uh, wow, holy shit, that's a mine. All right, yeah, slow the fuck down. But yeah, I've been reading Red Storm Rising, and I'm uh, oh my god, more mines, holy shit, Jesus, Jesus, what am I supposed to do with this man? I'm just not hit them. Slow the hell, slow down, slow down, slow down. Jesus Christ, man, are they proximity, or do I have to? Hit them. But yeah, Redstorm Rising, I've been reading it. I'm going to be recreating the battles in Dangerous Waters. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to try to make it like a little machinima kind of thing, like with voices and everything, narration. Should be really cool. Freaking mines, man. They're just like right here. Do I have to hit them or are they going to proximity my ass? <laughs> Why do they stay shallow? Wouldn't the mines be all... I don't know. Mining open ocean is just silly. No one mines open ocean. Randomly. You mine like a harbor or something. I guess you do have to hit these things. Yeah, for those of you who read Red Storm Rising, I'm going to be doing the huge carrier surface... or uh, airplane against carrier battle. I don't know if I want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but yeah, it's going to be crazy. Why am I still picking that up? I shouldn't be. It's in my baffles. Yeah, I don't... I'm trying to think of a way to show the vast quantities of everything in that battle, because if you know what I'm talking about, that battle has so much shit in it. Like, I can't really think of a way to show it all besides just looking at the tattoo map. Because there's a... I, I'm wondering, I'm curious to see how Dangerous Waters will even handle that. 
And the problem is, like, Redstone Rising is almost 30 years old now. And m many of the ships they reference do not even exist anymore. They're all decommed. And we got another mine up here. Well, I don't even see it. It's not even. Uh, it could be pretty freaking deep. Well, yeah, it says deeper, so yeah, turn this way. Get away, get away, get away, get away. And then there's another thing coming up. I don't really remember this as much, but there's a. Uh, the Chicago is going to intercept this huge um, amphibious group that's heading for Norway. And uh, I want to try and model that too. That'll be cool. And then there's also random uh, accounts when the Ferris runs into enemy submarines in the North Atlantic. But yeah, I'm going to be doing all these on Reinforce Alert mod. And from what I've heard, Reinforce Alert has all the old Soviet, all the old Cold War submarines. So I should be able to model it pretty well with like the Charlies and the Echoes and the hotels and the foxtrots and all those old ass random Russian submarines but I don't know yet if it is really modeled that well and it has all these old Cold War ships and this will actually go out go down pretty well but yeah I mean it is like almost 30 years old <laughs> Red Storm Rising that's crazy man it's crazy to think about it's freaking mines man like mines they think they're cool and in the Vietnam War with this shit, man. That's all that's going on here. And this one's really deep. I don't think there are any bad guys in this mission at all. Can I just ping? Like, look, I just pinged and all those lines came up on my, my sonar up there. I think I can just ping and pick up these mines. I don't really know if there's anyone else out here. This might not be the smartest idea. Why is it taking, if there's stuff out there, why is it taking so long for you to find it? It's either there or it's not. Okay, it looks like we got another mine. I would see that if that was a submarine. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there are any hostiles in this area. I don't know. Alright, I'm going to juice it up then at this rate. This is my <laughs> high frequency sonar for you. Yep, that's a freaking mine, all right. Oh, I can see it very slightly. See, when I run it on this uh, this virtual machine, it doesn't full screen. It doesn't full. When I change the virtual machine to full screen, it just uh, it doesn't scale it or stretch it. It just runs this window at its native resolution. So I decrease the resolution of Windows 7 from 1080 to 720, just so there's like because 720 is 44% of the pixels of 1080, so it just saves me tons of hard drive space to record it this way. And then that way it's also kind of zoomed in so I can... It's e it would be easier, it's easier to see it this way instead of at a um, 1080, because that makes this 480 even smaller, because this game's max resolution is 640 by 480. And apparently I just saw something on eBay the other day um, this guy, I don't know if it has, how valid it is or if it's true or not, but this guy apparently, like, modified SSN to be able to run on Windows 7 64-bit and is selling it on a disc for, like, 40 bucks. But it sounds like a freaking scam to me, man. I don't know. There was, like, this random post on some sim form of a guy talking about it and being like, yeah, this shit works so well, man, you know? And, like, no one else had chimed in or said anything, so that just made me really weary of it. And there's all these mines in the way of where I'm supposed to go, so I'm turning back left. <laughs> Alright, I'm glad I started pinging, because this just makes this whole process easier. Oh my god, there's a mine right fucking there. Transients. Alright, I'm... Well, that just got rid of all my mines, but I'm not pinging when there are transients afoot. Alright, slow down, slow down, slow down. I'll have one third eye. So what are the transients? Is someone dropping these mines or is some dude opening his torpedo tube doors? I don't know if I've really ever described this, but a transient is just, um... The word itself, transient, means, like, 
very quick, instant, and not lasting. So a transient sound is just something like, like that's a transient, like a knock like that, like anything like man-made like that. Like it could be a wrench falling, a torpedo do door opening. I don't know any kind, any number of things. That's a transient. I'm surprised they didn't model that in Dangerous Waters. You'd think they would have with a sum of that level, a sim of that level, but. I don't know, like the, the, the sonar automatically says when torpedoes are in the water, so you'd think they'd do it for transients too. Like when you open your missile hatches or launch a missile or open a, or flood a tube or open a door, it should, like your sonar should be like transient, transient, transient. Like that would be so cool. I don't know if they model that in reinforced alert mode, I don't know. No, I didn't want to do that, but whatever, fuck it. Nothing has happened to these transients.